Greetings, wrestling fans! Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while. About two weeks. Since I did a review. And I do apologize for that. Why did I all of a sudden stop doing them? I don't know, man. I guess I just didn't feel inspired. Or I guess I just thought... I think you guys have probably heard everything you've needed to hear me say about the shows for the last several weeks. Or maybe I just thought... My reviews aren't really going to be any interesting anymore because people don't really watch them anymore. So I don't know, man. I don't know why. I guess I just didn't feel like really doing them. But I felt like doing this episode today because you guys are probably going to be shocked to hear me say this, but this might have been one of the first better roars in a while. We are pretty close to WrestleMania. And yes, I am very well aware of the news about a certain dashing American Nightmare who has signed with WWE in his return or re-debut is imminent. I am very well aware of that. So let's start off by talking about the opening part of the show. Kevin Owens impersonated Stone Cold Steve Austin. Now honestly, this was pretty damn funny. Very hilarious, a nice comedy segment, and more importantly, it was a good way to build up to Kevin Owens and Steve Austin. And no, this isn't disrespect to Steve Austin, it's just a little bit of fun. It's just a little bit of fun. Just have a laugh. I was laughing throughout this whole segment because because Kevin Owens, you know, Kevin Owens is great. Kevin Owens is great. How can you not love Kevin Owens? Like, this is how you be a heel. To be a heel, you gotta have the fans hate you, right? To be a heel, the crowd have gotta hate you. If the crowd are cheering you while you're being the heel, then you're not really doing a good job. And because Steve Austin is so beloved, Kevin Owens really got under the skin of the WWE Universe today. Not only trolling the fans into thinking Steve Austin was there, and then they and then they have Steve Austin's theme play again to troll the fans even more into thinking he was going to be there. But again, it was a shame on you, you fool me once, shame on me, fool, fool, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me moment. Definitely one of the best opening segments in quite some time. I thoroughly did enjoy this. So yes, I have been watching Raw and SmackDown over the last two weeks, even though I haven't really been reviewing them. But yeah, I really did enjoy this opening segment. And then we had Ray and Dominic defeat the Dirty Dogs. Dominic would pin Robert Roode. And then the Miz would steal Rey Mysterio's mask. Yeah, that's really all you need to know. That... Um, I just do not care for this, I'm sorry. Another thing I didn't really care for is Omos. I don't know what it is, there's just something about Omos that is really missing. I want to like Omos, but there's just something about him that just isn't clicking with me just yet. I get what they're trying to do with him, and I get that. But there's just something about him that's missing to me. I think he definitely needs to improve his promos. That's definitely one thing he definitely needs to improve on. Anyway, he beats Apollo Crews and Commander Aziz. 
in a handicap match. He faced them like two weeks. He faced them both in singles matches. So it's like, well, if he could beat them in singles action, a handicap match isn't going to change anything. And that's exactly it. Omos wins. He got on the mic. He cut a promo, and that's pretty much really it there. He really needs to work better on his promos. Apparently, I've been told that they could be doing Bobby Lashley and Omos at WrestleMania. Jeez, talk about your piss break. Talk about a piss break matchup. That's what, that's that's it right there. Jesus Christ. Who in the world wants to see Bobby Lashley and Omos? That is a train wreck. That is a train wreck of a match. So Carmella and Zelina Vega were having more issues. They were fighting. It even came to blows. But it was all a ruse. Because after... Because when... Because after Shayna Baszler and Natalia defeated Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan, Shayna Baszler pinned Liv Morgan, by the way, Carmella and Zelina Vega were at ring, were, were there, and they hugged it out. They hugged it out, and it seems like their bickering and arguing was all a ruse. I highly doubt this. I still think they are breaking up. I still think Zelina Vega and Carmella are breaking up. Also, Seth Rollins and AJ, and also AJ Styles um, had a segment. We talked about Edge. Seth Rollins would come out, and we'd get a match between AJ Styles and Seth Rollins. This was deemed as Seth Rollins' last chance to get to WrestleMania. Becky Lynch delivered a warning to Bianca Belair. Becky's promos as a heel are definitely really good. I'm hoping Bianca, I'm hoping Becky Lynch starts giving back after WrestleMania. I feel Becky doesn't really need the championship anymore. I feel like her star power is hit to the point where she doesn't need to be champion. So I feel she needs to start giving back at least some points. Like against Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley and Dewdrop. So on, so forth. Then we had Finn Balor battle Austin Theory. Pat McAfee was at ringside for this matchup. Pat McAfee was is grouse. I couldn't stand this dude when he when I first saw him. When I, when I first saw this flog, I couldn't stand Pat McAfee. But now he's so damn hilarious. His little dance. To Austin Theory, that was that was that was that was grouse. That was so funny. But Pat McAfee would cost Austin Theory his match against Finn Balor. Finn Balor would get the win, as Finn Balor should. He should not be lo losing to Austin Theory. You can deem Austin Theory the future all you want, but he should not be. Lo but Finn Balor should not be losing to Austin Theory. You can deem him as the future, but he should not be beating Finn Balor. And RK Bro defeated Alpha Academy in a tag team match. Non-title didn't really mean anything. I love that. I love the fact that Randy Orton spoke up for the Alpha Academy and, and got Alpha Academy into WrestleMania. I felt like the Alpha Academy deserved to be at WrestleMania this year, so I'm really glad that Randy Orton stuck up for Alpha Academy and allowed them into their title match with the Street Profits. And I'm hoping Alpha Academy win at WrestleMania. Then we get Dana Brooke and Reginald against... You know... I don't have a problem with this. I'm happy for Dana Brooke and the push she's getting. Honestly, I'm a fan of Dana Brooke. I've, all, I, I've been a fan of hers for a while. I think she's one of the most underrated talents in the division. I'm happy she's finally getting a push. But this has gone on long enough. Not the push of Dana Brooke. This whole thing of of Dana and Reginald being in a partnership, being in a relationship, Kazawa trying to bond a relationship with Tamina. I mean, hell, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that Tazawa is even getting matches on Raw. I'm happy that at least he's getting matches on Raw. 
But I, but I feel this whole thing has been going on for so long. And I thought the St. Valentine's Day episode where, to, where Reggie turned on Dana, I thought that was the end of the whole thing. I thought that was the end of the whole story. But they've just continued and continued and continued it following that. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy for Dana. But I feel this whole angle needs to end. It needs to end. Take the 24-7 title off of Dana Brooke and give her a real push, please. I, I, yes, the 24-7 title is deemed as a push, but should it really be? I think Dana Brooke needs a real push. You know, an actual contention for the Raw Women's Championship. She's talented enough to challenge for the title. Why not give her that opportunity? And in the main event was AJ Styles and Seth freaking Rollins. This was deemed as Seth Rollins' last chance to get to WrestleMania. The match would end via disqualification. Edge would grab a chair. And Seth Rollins would, loo would go ballistic at ringside saying this is bullshit. And he said that next week, Raw is not going to happen until he gets his match. Loud Cody Rhodes chance can testify. I think this is where we will see Cody Rhodes debut. I think he'll debut at WrestleMania, but I'm not going to rule out him appearing at Raw next week. So that is your Monday Night Raw review, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Hit that thumbs up. Comment your thoughts and opinions down below. And I'll see you all next time.